Attention BMW owners, if you're not satisfied with your stock stereo system because you need it to be cleaner, louder, and just overall better sounding, but are apprehensive because you don't want to cut or modify anything, you're going to want to stick around for this video. We'll be looking at plug and play speaker and amplifier solutions from the brand Match, including a full installation tutorial. So hang out with us as we go through a full match system designed for BMW. Hey, what's up? My name is Josh. I'm with Breaker Stereo, and let's cover a few things before we dive into this. Now, this video is going to be in depth, so I'll lay out a table of contents. First, we'll go over application as far as which BMWs this system will work with. Second, we'll review products individually. Third, we'll take you through a full installation tutorial on a 2017 BMW 3 Series F30. Fourth, we'll show you how to program the DSP in the amplifier. And finally, we'll test and measure a few systems. First being that bone stock hi-fi system in that 2017 BMW 3 Series F30, then adding the amplifier upgrade only to that vehicle, then doing the speaker upgrade only, to that system and then changing out both the amplifier and the speakers and as a bonus we're going to bring in another f30 that has a factory harman kardon system so that we can use that as reference so fellow bmw enthusiasts get comfortable as we completely explore the options that the match plug and play line designed for bmws has to offer First off, there are two most common factory systems installed in most BMWs. One is the Hi-Fi 676 system. Now the second is the Harman Kardon system. Now, if you have the Harman Kardon system, you'll notice there'll be a Harman Kardon badge on some of the speakers, mainly the front tweeter. If you don't have the badge, more than likely you have the Hi-Fi system. The app we'll be examining is designed to plug and play into the Hi-Fi system. Now, if you have the Harman Kardon or HK system, then you can upgrade to this system, but there is an additional adapter needed in order to make the amplifier work. Now, if you have a lower one series or two series that does have the Harman Kardon system, more than likely this will still work on those vehicles only, but we'll leave a link in the description below directing you directly to the manufacturer's application guide so you can check your vehicle's compatibility. But in general, the year range is very wide from 2006 all the way up to 2022. And the model range for passenger cars are one series all the way up to five series and SUVs X1 all the way up to X5. Now regarding factory Harman Kardon systems, it's noteworthy to mention that during the time of this recording, BMW is not producing vehicles with the Harman Kardon system because of the worldwide chip shortage. So if you're in the market for a BMW or have a BMW without the HK system and want one but couldn't get that option, this is an excellent way to get an even better system since it isn't or wasn't available. Now, one of the best things about these products is you don't have to splice, dice, cut wire, solder, use butt connectors, however you normally do your installation. It's plug and play. And let me tell you, it's heaven sent for shops like us or guys like you who want to do the installation yourself. Installing aftermarket systems in complex vehicles like BMWs or Mercedes can be a pain and these solutions save time and also save customers money that would be spent on installation. Also, it's worth mentioning, these do not interfere with any of the electronics in your vehicle. BMW owners know that our cars are sensitive to everything. And the last thing we want to do is install a stereo system that will cause other issues in the vehicle. With these plug and play solutions, it's virtually impossible to mess this thing up. And you'll see as we do the installation a little bit later in the video, how easy it actually is. Okay, that takes care of that. Let's go ahead and jump into the actual products, starting with the amplifier, and then we'll work our way to the speakers and then the subwoofers. This is the Match Up 7 BMW, and yes, it's a seven channel app. 
So it's 65 watts times five RMS into four ohms. That's for your front speakers, your rear speakers, and your center channel. And it has 160 watts times two into two ohms for the subwoofers underneath each seat, which is about double the power of your stock hi-fi system. Now, the other thing that makes this amplifier special is it has built-in DSP, which we'll be going over how to adjust and set up during the installation process. But it has a 64-bit digital processor. Also, with time alignment, a 30-band equalizer for fine-tuning, a one-band parametric EQ, high-pass adjustable crossovers from 20 hertz all the way up to 20K. And the low-pass filter range is 20 hertz up to 300 hertz. Selectable filter slopes, 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36, and 42 dB per octave. Selectable types of crossovers as well. Butterworth, Bessel, Links Widths, and more. Phase adjustment for the front, rear, center, and also the subwoofers. Now, you'll need to have a PC handy in order to program this unit. It's not compatible with OS software. Here's another big plus. Let's say you wanted to add more bass to the system. Now, we can easily do this because this amplifier gives you an RCA pre-out, so there's no need to add a high-low adapter. Again, no cutting or splicing of wires. Now, this is a world-class DSP all wrapped into a small package that plugs into the back of your BMW so you can install this in about a half hour will take you a little bit longer to tune it but you can double the power in your BMW with a simple plug and play solution with this amplifier. Next let's cover the front stage these are the up C42 BMW dash FRT.2 now these are 100 millimeter mids and 25 millimeter tweeters or the standard measurements are four inch for the mids and one inch for the tweeter but since we're talking about german vehicles and german products let's just go ahead and keep it metric not to mention which i didn't before that this company audio tech fisher which owns match is based out of germany so all these products are engineered and designed in germany the impedance is 4 ohm. The frequency response ranges from 100 hertz all the way up to 25K. They handle 60 watts RMS, 120 peak. This does come with a separate crossover and there is a tweeter attenuation at zero, negative three, and negative six. So if that tweeter's a little bright, you can back it down. And unlike the amplifier, this fits in nearly every BMW that takes 100 millimeter speakers. So these plug directly into your BMW wiring. So you just go ahead and plug it in and they will bolt right up. And the tweeter will actually clip right in. The cone is made of polypropylene with a rubber surround and you have a neodymium magnet on the backside for that lower profile. The tweeters are silk dome, which produce a nice, rich, smooth sound. Okay, next, the match up X4 BMW CTR.3. Now this is for your center speaker also 100 millimeters 60 watts rms 120 watts peak frequency range is 100 hertz up to 25k these are four ohm and they also measure 90 db at one watt one meter again direct drop in plug and play and it does come with this inline capacitor now you'll only use this if you're being powered up by the factory radio in this case, we will not use it because we're going to use the amplifier and the amplifier will be able to select the crossover points when we set up the DSP. If you're not upgrading the app, but you do have the factory app, then do not use the capacitor either because the factory app has a crossover already set. Okay, hope that's clear. Next, for the rear speakers, model up X4 BMW dash FRT. These are exactly the same specs as your center channel, except for the mounting, which is different. You'll notice that there's a spacer attached to the speaker, bringing it away from the window, opposed to the center speaker, which does not have that spacer. These also come with an inline crossover, but apply the same rules as the center speaker. And finally, the match up w8 bmw dash s these are the replacement subwoofers that are installed underneath the front seats of your bmw these will drop in and you'll get a plug that will plug into the factory harness you simply need to connect the positive and negative lead on the speaker terminal here okay so these woofers are 200 millimeters they handle up to 200 watts rms 400 watts peak 
the frequency response is 25 hertz all the way up to 140 and these are 90 db at one watt one meter the speaker is made of carbon fiber and it has rubber surround it also has a large dust cap with a design to reinforce or stiffen the cone and these woofers are single to ohm okay so that does it for the equipment let's go ahead and hit the garage and start the installation tutorial all right so we're going to start with the amplifier let's just take a quick look so we have the amp then we have the harness okay and then we have a usb to i believe that's a mini usb maybe even a micro usb and this we're going to use to hook up to our laptop in order to program the dsp now this also has a plug-in for the power on the ground and the turn on now you don't necessarily need this this will just plug and play okay let's start to take this apart in order to make this a lot easier we want to remove this panel in here so i'm going to take off this plate and these are held in by these clips. You have four total, two on the inside, two on the outside. And then we're gonna need to remove this panel by taking this up. Okay, so now we're gonna remove this panel here and then we'll get these two outside clips and this piece will come right off. And then we'll set that aside. Okay, so now we have to take off this panel. Now this just pops up and from here you can actually see the amplifier, but you can't get to it completely. So we're gonna remove this panel so that's easier to get to. Okay, so you have a clip here that needs to be removed. So in order to get this panel out completely, we do need to release that there. So this will pop up like that. That's a T40. And above this hook, there's a, a clip there. So I'm gonna unclip this here. Okay, and there's a cigarette lighter that we need to disconnect, so we'll just disconnect that there. Right here, so you have to fold the back seat down in order to get to it. And this bracket is attached by a 10 millimeter nut. So here's your factory amplifier. All right, and then we got one more 10 millimeter here, and that's the bracket that holds the amplifier in, if you wanted to get it. Okay, so now we can take the amplifier out and you'll see how the amp will mount to the brackets. One last bolt here and that's an eight millimeter. Here's your factory amplifier. Now we're gonna go ahead and mount the amplifier bracket to the match amp. And as you can see, you have the mounting tabs all in the same spot. And you can attach the bracket to the amplifier with the provided screws. Okay, that's all done. Let's go ahead and pop that back in. All right, so we're not gonna put this back in quite yet. We're gonna go ahead and tune the amplifier. I have the PC open, the software is up. As you can see, we have the USB cable that's running from the amplifier and I have it routed to the front to the PC. So let's go ahead and jump up front real quick. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do is go over to the Audio Tech Fisher website, head over to tools, then DSP PC tool over to downloads, and then you're gonna download the first one here. So once you hit that button, that'll take you through the download process. We've already done it, but it does take a few minutes in order to do that. Once that's done, it's going to give you an icon that looks like this. So go ahead and double click that. Now, originally we were going to do this in the vehicle, but there was a lot of glare and it was hard to see the screen. So we decided to do a screen recording instead. So I don't have it hooked up to the vehicle, but I'm able to get in here and still adjust things and show you guys how it's done. If you are doing this in the vehicle live, you'll notice on the top, it'll say connected, okay? And once it's connected, then it's gonna say launch. All you have to do is just hit that there and then you're good to go. That'll take you right to it. Since this is the demo, I do have to select the amplifier and then hit start demo and then load. When it loads up, everything is going to be flat. What I recommend doing is this, going back to the Audio Tech Fisher website, going to tools, going to sound setup, selecting the amplifier, the manufacturer, and then I'm just gonna select touring model, and then download, and that'll be saved in a file. So make note of where you save it, go back into the software, hit load, and then you're just gonna go ahead and hit that right there. 
and that will give you a good starting point as you can see the equalizer is adjusted you have some crossover points already but I'll show you how to adjust these okay all right so here's one thing to note: you can adjust these individually as you can see you have front left front right rear left rear right so on and so forth if you notice are squares at the top and then you also have these tabs here if you want to adjust just one single channel you would just simply hit one of these tabs here and then nothing on the boxes okay so this will adjust just the front right speaker or the front left speaker so on and so forth if you want to sync the channels together let's say you want to do the front together you would just simply make sure that that box is red and then also click the other box here for the corresponding channel and then you're able to adjust the equalizer for both of those channels okay if you wanted to do the rears together you can certainly do that just by simply marking those boxes okay so that's pretty self-explanatory let's talk about crossovers real quick okay so I'm gonna go ahead and select the front and rears together since they are four inch speakers that tune that we uploaded picked 400 that's a little high so I'm gonna go with 150 I'll leave the Butterworth and I'll leave the 24 DB octave slope if I wanted to do the center channel differently, then I would just simply hit this button and that will default for that center, take all those boxes away, and then from here I'm able to adjust that center channel independently. So I recommend when you're doing this live, play some music, adjust it. What you can do is this, is you can just take all the other speakers out and then just single out, in this case, the center channel, and then adjust this accordingly, how you see fit, okay? So to the right of the EQ, is your are your highs to the left is your bass and then also I would go ahead and kind of play with the crossover too to see where it sounds the best okay so that's cool that's a cool feature you're able to X those other speakers out and if you're adjusting let's say the subwoofers you can do uh, the same thing so just take out all these other channels then go over to subwoofer and then adjust accordingly here okay on the subwoofer you do have a subsonic filter that works here using the high pass filter I don't necessarily like that so I'm just gonna go ahead and hit bypass there and that'll give me all the frequencies now that's just preference guys it's totally up to you if you like the subsonic filter go ahead and use it Let's go ahead and talk about some other features that this DSP has if you look in the upper right hand corner you have some tabs here we were on main and then right now I'm gonna go over to DCM now the DCM is going to allow us to configure a remote control I don't have this remote control but if I did I can do control one let's say master volume control two could be subwoofer or vice versa so I'm gonna just gonna skip over that and go to FX now there's a lot to talk about in the FX menu let's start with this this is the dynamic boost now if I enable the dynamic bass enhancement boost here I'm able to pick the frequency I want to boost and the gain okay now let me kind of explain this it adds more bass at lower volume so let's say you're listening to music at a low moderate level sometimes you lose a lot of that bass you have to kind of crank up the volume in order to hear it this will actually allow me to pick the frequency I want to boost so let's say I want to pick 45 Hertz I could also select how much gain it's going to put in so I have to choose between six and nine and, and three okay so I'll just choose six and then that's ready to go again at lower volumes it's going to boost whatever frequency you pick at the gain level you want next you have the sub expander now the sub expander the best way for me to explain this is very similar to an epicenter so it will actually boost some of those frequencies in songs that don't have a lot of bass in our market it's a lot of spanish music also there's rock and some other genres that don't have that bass so this will actually put some more bass into that music making it sound fuller Okay, next to center processing. Okay, here we have real center. And if you enable this, this will adjust the speakers for a better center channel experience. You also have clarity expander. This improves the higher frequency responses. I'm gonna probably keep that disabled because we already have that tweeter. We already have a bunch of tweeters in here. I think we're good to go without that. If you have the factory speakers, I would probably enable it. Okay, next you have front processing. You have stage expander. So this will enlarge your front stage obviously this is done within the DSP and it has to do with phasing in order to create a larger sound front stage so I'm gonna go ahead and enable that all right and that takes care of the FX then you have the input output configuration okay from here if you want you can get more input by just selecting here I'm gonna to go to 7 this actually goes to 10 let's just go ahead and select 7 that's what we found to work the best Okay, and then we also have time alignment so you can measure your speakers out um, according to the driver's seat or the front seats so that you're getting better staging. So that pretty much covers that. Now, 
This will save every few seconds, but if you want to go ahead and save everything, I'm going to just go back to main and then hit save and store and then go ahead and hit save. All right, and then put it in the file here. So you have it saved on your computer. If you ever wanted to reference it, you could always go back and upload it into the computer. Okay, so before we test this out before, we're gonna throw the original one back in and then we're gonna test with our dB meter uh, and then we'll AB these against each other to see how much louder this amplifier is versus the factory. All right, all stock, stock amplifiers, stock speakers. Okay, so 105.8. As we started to approach max volume, it was distorting a little bit, so uh, make note of that. Okay, so let's go ahead and put the programmed match back in and test it. So now with the amp swapped and the stock speakers. 109.3, so that's just a little bit over 3 dB, and the rule of thumb is 3 dB gain for double the power, so it's pretty much right on. All right, cool. So that's that. Let's go ahead and swap the speakers around and then retest. Okay, so we'll start with the front doors and then we'll move our way around. You're going to want to go ahead and grab a couple panel pull tools and then grab a T20. You're going to have two bolts behind here that's holding that door in. Now, this piece is actually pretty tight. So what you want to do is use your first tool, kind of pry away at it. There's a few clips here, so I got it loose here on the bottom. I'm going to go and grab another tool. See if I can get the other ones to come up. All right, so there you go. So that's really tight. You got basically one, two, three, four clips in there that's holding this. All right, so once that's out, you have your T20 behind here. Let's go and remove those two screws. So you got one here and then. All right, so that's that. Okay, next we got to pull away at this panel. So, there's clips around this whole thing. What we want to do is start at the bottom. So I'm going to take my panel tool here. I'm going to pry it in, get my fingers in it. And at the bottom and then. Okay, now I'm going to go around. All right. All right, so there we go. And then we're gonna go up starting from the back, keeping the eye on the lock here. This comes up and then down. All right, so now this is apart. Okay, so to make this easier, we're gonna go ahead and release some of the wiring and the clips here. So we're gonna take this off. This simply just pulls this way. Be aware of that there, because if you do it the wrong way, you could break that off. That's for the latch. Uh, and then we have some wiring here. So this is pulls away. All right, so I seem to be struggling there. So I can also do this, is just pop this through. And then it'll come out like that. But this comes up pretty easy. Again, use your plastic pry tool. You want to stay away from anything metal. You want to scar anything here. All right, so you got a clip there. And then from here, we'll just go ahead and release that. And we're gonna fish this through the backside. All right, make a note of what hole that went through and then unclip it here. And then we're completely off. All right, perfect. Okay, so let's go ahead and extract the 100 millimeter speaker in the door. Use your T20, put those aside. From here, we got two plugs, one going to the tweeter. So let's release that. And then this comes off the speaker and that goes to the amplifier. All right, so that's that. There's your original speaker. Uh, paper cone, rubber surround. Um, so that's what that looks like. We'll put that aside. And then let's go ahead and take out the tweeter as well. So that just pops here, pull here. This is going to come around this way. Gotta be a little careful here. Now you could take this out all the way if you wanted to. Uh, what I'm gonna do is it's a little flexible. So I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of twist it a little bit. Okay. There's my tweeter. All right, there's the cap for that factory tweeter. And then from here, this is clipped in. So I'm just gonna release the clips. And I'm just gonna pull on the, that wire there and that just came right out. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and remove this. We're gonna reuse this piece here in a minute. All right, so here's our tweeter. 
got that silk dome tweeter. We're gonna go ahead and just pop it in. Gotta get these clips out of the way. So essentially I have three clips here that hold the tweeter in. So that's in there nice and tight now. All right. And then we're gonna take the wire and route it through that factory foam. Okay, now we don't have a cap. We have a crossover and I'll show you that here in a minute. But we'll go ahead and route this around in the same manner that the factory one was. All right, so that's all clipped in. And then you have a clip here that you wanna make sure is in the right spot. All right, so that's good. Now, you have your tweeter line that's here. This does come with the crossover. I'm gonna have to mount this crossover here in a minute. I'll show you what we're gonna do here, okay? There's also some instructions on the back of it. So high pass filter configuration. There's a jumper that is in here. Okay, and that's set. You got three, two, one. And if you read here, this says if it's driven by the DSP amplifier, um, the high pass filter will be deactivated. And if it's driven by the car stereo, then the high pass filter will be uh, activated. Now that's the default. So we want to make sure that we set this to the DSP amp. So we're going to take uh, the jumper, make sure it's on two and three. So that's on one and two. I'm going to pull it off and I'm going to set it on two and three. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to the mid. Um, it actually goes this way with the connection here. If you try to put it where it's the logo is like more than right side up, then you're gonna be able to get that and that, but you won't get the last one. The last one is over there. Okay, so now let's go ahead and install the crossover. Um, you've got three points here. You have this point here, and then you have these two points here. Now, as you can see, this one says mid. So that's gonna go to the mid. So we'll start with that first. Now on the mid itself, there's actually two different plugs. So just pick one, it doesn't matter. They're wired in parallel anyhow. So I'm just gonna pick the top one. That's gonna go in there snug. All right, so I'm gonna pull on, make sure it's nice and tight. Yep, and then the other one is labeled in, and that's gonna be this input here. So go ahead and clip that together. That's nice and tight. And the last one actually goes to the tweeter. All right, so there's that. So it's it's all labeled, and then when that's not labeled, it has nowhere else to go but that spot. Okay, so you can't really mess that up. All right, so I'm gonna grab some wire ties really quick. What I'm doing is I'm gonna tie this up, and then we're gonna put it in this, this area here. So I'll grab some industrial grade double stick tape, and we'll mount that there. Okay, that's it. That's installed tweeter, mid, crossover, done. Okay, I'm gonna leave it at zero. Uh, DB on the tweeter, but of course you can move that to either negative six or negative three if you like. So let's go and put the door panel back on. So basically same procedure. You wanna release this, you got your two uh, screws here, and then everything else is gonna be very similar, except of course, we're not gonna have that extra tweeter. So this is gonna go a little bit quicker. All right, so let's go ahead and switch this speaker off. And then we have our speaker here. Okay, like we talked about in the intro, we're not gonna use this cap, so just leave that there for what we're doing. First thing you wanna do, so obviously put it in. So let's go ahead and make sure that it's gonna line up correctly. This will just plug in again. There's two of them, the wired in parallel, so just choose one and good to go. All right, so that takes care of the rear. Let's go and put the panel back on. Once you do your first one, it becomes a lot easier. I'm on my last panel, and this is the driver front door, as you can see, but I wanted to cover this because it is a little tricky. You can see this is where this is gonna go here, over the top of this metal. Now, if you don't get it in there right, it's gonna be all wonky. So what you wanna do is you wanna start up here, okay? And get that spot in there behind. And once it's behind, you're pretty good. Go ahead and slide. And then you're gonna get caught up here. So just move this over. And then you're pretty good. Okay, so that's there. Now the next thing you wanna do is line up the door lock. So if you have the opening here, 
Then what you can do is take your finger and just kind of move it around. You can move your head around here and then just go ahead and shoot for the light. And then it's gonna go right through just like that. And then we'll just go ahead and go slowly. This is really tight. So we wanna make sure it's in there good. Okay, and then once you believe it's in, in place, then you can go ahead and snap it back in. Okay, uh, beyond that, it's pretty easy to put this door back together. All right, so let's go and do the center channel. Basically, there's a couple clips on here. So you wanna be careful with this. Get our panel tool, kinda of get under it. And just slide it and you'll see that it'll come up slightly here. And you never wanna force anything if you don't want anything to break, so. Just go slow, no rush. Just take your time. Now just put a middle mouth pressure and then go to the other side. All right, your four clips here and then here. So you don't want to just pull this thing right because you could break these clips off. So these are the points, the corners are the points where you want to put the pressure. Now we got to get this guy out here. I'm going to go and grab a small tool to get that out. All right, so I got this small hand tool here. Um, there's a couple different types that you can get. This one is one that we have here at the shop. Most of the guys have this because it's really handy. All right, so we're gonna replace it with this center speaker and uh, one of the obvious first main differences is going to be this has your tweeter here. So it's gonna be much brighter, okay? And again, we're not gonna use uh, that crossover that comes with it. We can use the crossover in the amplifier. All right, so now we're gonna do the subwoofers underneath the seat. So we need to take the seat up. So the first thing we're gonna do is move this thing back here. And then you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and grab a T45, okay? And then go get your, your big boy drill. And you got your four screws, you got this one. And then we got the two in the back. Move the seat all the way up as far as it can go. And also recline it as far forward as possible. You got two bolts here. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is Pull this back and then I'm not going to disconnect any wiring. Uh, I don't want to set off any airbag lights or anything like that. So I'm just going to go ahead and just recline that back as far as possible. And I got four screws for the grill and there's four screws holding in the subwoofer. So the screws for the grill are going to be your T30. So let me grab that and I'm just going to kind of maneuver the seat around a little bit so I can get to all four screws without having to take the seat out. All right, so that's that. Okay, so now we have the subwoofer. So you can see your subs here, and then we gotta take out these screws here. So you got a T10, the four silver screws here. So there's one. The other one's back here. So you just gotta move the carpet out of the way in order to get to these. You just be careful there. Okay, let me just kind of maneuver around a little bit. This subwoofer. All right, so you gotta pry this out a little bit. Metal panel tool is probably gonna be the easiest tool to use to get this out. All right, so there it is. I'm underneath it already. There we go. All right, so that's gonna come out like that. And here is the plug. So just go ahead and tab that down. It's gonna come right out. All right, so there is your speaker. You have the inverted magnet on that. That's the original obviously speakers and uh, we're gonna take that out and then put this guy in here so if you've ever installed an amplifier with these, with these type of connectors very similar to that all right so I'm gonna go ahead and just put some spades on here instead of just going directly into that that's gonna make for a better connection okay so it doesn't come with these connectors but these you can easily find at any hardware store okay all right, so that's a good solid connection right there. So now we can plug this in like that. Okay, so that's good to go. It's notched here and that is for speaker connection. So the speaker wires are gonna go on the outside. So we'll pull up the carpet a little bit and then maneuver this in here. Yeah, so I don't wanna to torque down quite yet. Just go in a circle here. And then the final one here. I'm gonna go ahead and 
Tuck the wire in this way. Okay. Just like that, we're good to go. And then I'm gonna go ahead and move the carpet around to where it was before. Okay, and then we're gonna grab the grill and then we're gonna switch over to our T30. And that's pretty much it for the subs. I think you guys can get it from here. Okay, aftermarket speakers with the factory amplifier. Okay, 106.4. Now with the factory speakers, factory amp, we got 105.8. So you get a slight increase to 106.4, but the sound is much cleaner than the factory speakers, mainly because they are definitely better sounding speakers. Okay, so let's move on to the match speakers and the match amp. So we got a 112.4 dB, so that's so much more volume than the original. Also, the clarity is much better. You've got way more bass with the aftermarket amplifier and the aftermarket subwoofers working together. Uh, being able to adjust everything just gives you that nice ability to control the music that's going on. The factory system is just really flat compared to this. Not a lot of bass, not a lot of volume not super clean this gives you everything and it's just a really good system plug and play they've done an excellent job with this system i just can't really say enough about it it's just an awesome system all right so let's go ahead and wrap up the back here and we'll just finish this video up As a bonus, we're gonna to listen to this 2018 340 with a factory Harman Kardon system. This is Baja's vehicle, and we wanted to thank him for coming over and allowing us to do this test. Okay, 110.3 decibels. Not as loud as the full match system with the amplifier and speaker upgrade, which came in at 112.4. That's 2.1 dB louder than the Harman Kardon, but I can say this is a pretty impressive system nevertheless. Okay, so let's head back inside so we can wrap this up. Okay, so as a recap, we have the factory hi-fi system come in at 105.8. Now the match amplifier with the stock speakers came in at 109.3. The upgraded speakers with the factory amp 106.4 and the full match system, match amp, match speakers at 112.4. Now as the bonus, that factory HK system, we measured out at 110.3. Overall, the match upgrade is very impressive. It has much more clarity and precision than the factory hi-fi system and even the Harman Kardon system. Not to mention, it's 6 dB louder than the hi-fi system and 2.1 dB louder than the Harman Kardon. Audio Tech Fisher has done an outstanding job with these audio components and are priced less than other of the comparable products on the market. You've got lots of pluses here. Easy installation, a two year warranty on the amplifier and the speakers, a one year warranty on the subs. Again, louder, cleaner, more precise, no wire cutting or modifications to your vehicle. So if you're interested in these products, they can be purchased on our website. Just click the links in the description below. And if you would like this exact package, we have bundled it together. Just click the link entitled Match Package. Remember, we do have financing available. Simply add to cart, pick a financing option, apply, get approved, and we'll send the merchandise out to you ASAP. And FYI, the pricing is as follows. 
The Apple Fire is $9.99. The two subs are priced at $3.99. The front stage speakers are $2.99 and the rear $1.99. And don't forget about that center channel, which is $99 or the full package is priced at $1,999. Okay, all my Beamer enthusiasts, if you stayed with us this long, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Okay, thanks for hanging with us throughout this video, and we'll see you next time.